very confusing year for our office. <laughs> um, but at the very end of August, you can actually go in and start creating your profile. So there's a week, I think it's the second week of August, Nursing Cast basically shuts down and restarts for the year. Um, so the last week of August, you can go in and start creating your profile, um, which is basically inputting all of your personal information, all of your academic information, um, uploading your licenses and certifications, and then come November 1st, PCC's application will become available to you, and at that point, you'll go in and answer our questions, and then upload documents that we require, but you can't do that until November 1st. Um, and then if you have any trouble uploading that, you can always call our office and we can help you with that. Um, now that we've been through a full year, we have a much better understanding of where to send you guys for what kinds of questions. Um, but yeah, I would definitely say start it earlier rather than later so that um, it doesn't become a problem. Remember that um, because we're a part of this computerized application system, um, you actually have to send all of your official transcripts from every college that you've ever attended to Nursing Cast directly. And Nursing Cast is in Washington, D.C., which, as you know, starting in about December, they don't have very great weather. Um, and so this year, our deadline fell when they were actually um, like in a blizzard. And so <laughs> some people's transcripts did not get there. So you want to have all of your transcripts sent and received by Nursing Cast by our deadline of February 15th. And we do give a grace period, which means um, that you have a week to get it verified by the 24th. And if it's not verified by the 24th, then we don't consider it. Um, but you do want to have everything sent in, preferably as soon as your fall grades post. So you can get them sent in December um, after your grades post. And then that will give Nursing Cast the full month of January to verify and get everything in there. Um, the other thing that I would stress is as you go in and fill out your nursing cast application, um, put in contact information that is not going to change for the duration of the application cycle. We did have a lot of students that moved mid-cycle um, that for some reason changed their email addresses mid-cycle um, and or cell phone numbers. Uh, our landlines and so try to use contact information that will be something that we can get a hold of you at for at least um, four to five months <laughs> and then change it after. <laughs> so. I've had the same cell phone number since 1991 when cell phones first became available at the Dallas Oregon. <laughs> I have a Dallas phone number so they can reach me and you can reach me too if you need to. Thank Hope you for you bringing up that thought. I know yeah. that was really yeah. confusing this year. Well, like one more thing is, it, it seems like a lot of information being thrown at you, and it is, and when you turn in your application, you pay your fee, put in your credit card info, and it just closes and it says thank you. And it's like, okay, I just worked on this for so long. Mm -hmm. Like, are you sure? Did I put everything in there? You can call. Call the schools. Like, if they email you, mm -hmm. they're not going to send you a congratulations. You filled everything out correctly. Email. Like, <laughs> call them and be like, did I get everything in? Did you get my transcripts? Did you receive my nursing cast information? Did I do everything right? Like, you're not annoying anyone. Use your resources. I did. I, I called every school. I talked to everyone. And if you sure. start it in August, you can start and stop it as many times as yeah. you want before you submit it. So um, give yourself that time because you are going to need to walk away from it and then come back because yes. your eyes will be crossed after you start it's it. It's an hours long process. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Not like an hour. It's yeah. hours long process. Yes, it's very, very different. And the other thing too is they have these little um, like quadrants that have you know, like kind of the progress bar that will show you when you completed something, but it's not always accurate because not every school requires every single thing on that quadrant. So um, just use your checklist. The one thing that I will say tripped up a lot of people this year is that um, PCC requires a supplemental application. So you have to pay nursing cast to submit your application, but then you also have to pay PCC to process your application and you have to upload your receipt. Um, and so they're going to email you a receipt, and you can just save that as a PDF and then upload that to your application. But that was incredibly confusing for lots and lots of people. Um, we tried to move it around and put it in more places so that it doesn't get missed again this year. Um, and just pay it once. And if you feel like you paid it but you didn't get like an email confirmation, call the business office because we don't want you to pay it twice. Um, so, again, any questions, just call us.
we're happy to figure stuff out, especially now that we've been through a full cycle. It makes a lot more sense for everybody. <laughs> I will say that when you apply to PCC or any of the other community colleges or OHSU specifically, you're going to need to take 15 credits of upper division classes, meaning three and 400 level classes that OHSU does not provide because they strictly do nursing school. It's not, they're not going to give you like sociology and stuff. So you're going to have to do that either online through an upper division, like a four year school or go to P PSU, take 15 credits, and then transfer those over to OHSU. And um, we do termly audits on ourselves at OHSU. So every term you go into, the, it's like, kind of like the same system at, as PCC where you put in your, um, your PCC number and your password. And then it says like, person where you sign up for classes, well, there's a option it says audit degree audit and like we do the same thing at OHSU and like they didn't have mine right as of last year and I've done plenty of years of school so I had the credits they just weren't adding them up right and so like make sure your credits are in order and make sure you get those 15 credits elsewhere people have done it alongside nursing school but if you ask them if they would do it over they would totally have taken them in the summer yes <laughs> yes because try to get them done before you yeah nursing school. and PSU has a thing where you can take uh, they have one month terms in the summer so you can take two terms worth of classes in the summer and even if people knew that they were like I would have taken summer courses and not tried to tag it along with a nursing school class because Nursing school is its own beast. You don't want to add to it. One last question about the micro. Micro is now required. It's a prerequisite. It's a prerequisite now. You used to could not take micro as a prerequisite, but take it during the first phase of, med of nursing school, but that was just overwhelming for any students that did that. So they just said, no, you can't do that anymore. You have to take micro. And you know you can take it here, and you can take that at PCC or any place. Well, in those upper division 15 credits, we have a person doing one of the classes this last term because we're in our IP term. And OHSU, we graduate two years, two weeks before the term actually ends, so they're able to process our paperwork to sit for the NCLEX two weeks faster, and they have direct relationship with them. But this person's application is going to be held up waiting for PSU transcripts because she has to finish a PSU course. So try not to do it in your last term either. Yeah. And once you come in for advising, we do long-term planning with you guys. We don't just plan out your prereqs. We start there so that we can get you on the appropriate timeline. But once you complete your prerequisites, we start planning out your graduation requirements, your nursing program electives. We talk about where you can get your CNA, um, what term looks good for CNA so that you can get the correct amount of experience so that you can get the correct amount of points when you apply. Um, and then we start talking to you about things like statistics and like your 15 credits of upper division, um, foreign language requirements, things like that, so that when you get to OHSU, you're just doing the nursing curriculum at OHSU. Um, one little last story I'll tell. Well, not the last one. I'm sure I'll have more. <laughs> <laughs> Just have so many. I've seen so many people come through here. I've seen. I've heard so many questions from these. We've had these conferences for five or six years now. It seems like, and um, and so I've, I've heard the questions, and then to see um, really good students go all the way through, uh, like uh, these folks, and stay in touch with them to some degree. Um, as an example, and uh, I won't use her name, but she she applied the first year and did not get accepted. She had uh, was trying to get into PCC and had 52 points, I think, out of the 60 potential, right? 60 potential? Right now. Anyway, this was a few years ago, and uh, she didn't have any of the of patient care, direct patient care. And she hadn't finished all her prerequisites. And I mean, when they say you have to have finished all your prerequisites, you have to have finished all of your prerequisites before your application goes in to get those points. And uh, so she had 52 and didn't and got rejected, even though she had a four point 
uh, the next year after having gone back and finished the last few prerequisites, micro and statistics and some other stuff, and by having all the prerequisites done, then she got the points for getting all your prerequisites at PCC. You go do them all at PCC, they give you a little bonus there. And then if, uh, and then she had uh, gotten a CNA and gone to work and had plenty of hours and she got those points and now she had 60. She had 60 points. Well, it was kind of a slam dunk to get in with 60. So the point being is that those those points that I just mentioned, those three sets of points, the, the ones for having all your things at PCC, the ones for having all your prerequisites completely completed, and the ones for having the work experience, those are huge in terms of who gets in and who doesn't, because most everybody's going to have, I would think, 48 or 49 or 52 or 56 or 58. But the point is, is those last, those, those three things, I think, are really important. And they have seemed to be very important in terms of the students. I've, I what? mean, I think that the biggest message to take away from here is if you, you know, listen to what everyone's saying is, it is it's this magic combination of having points from as many places as possible. You can have a super high GPA. I just had a conversation with someone last week who had a 4.0 and didn't get in. And she didn't get in because she didn't have um, her prereqs at PCC, she didn't have healthcare experience, um, and she was in progress. So it's like, it's a combination. It's not just GPA. Right now, the average GPA is a 3.9. It's been a 3.9 to get into the nursing program for the last six years. But that doesn't mean you have to have a 3.9. I've had plenty of people get in with a lower GPA, but with healthcare experience, with their prereqs at PCC, um, community service, like if you have this magic combination of things, that's what gets you in there. You want to get points out of every single place where you can. Right now it's worth 70 points, but it is impossible to get 70 points, okay? Um, because we're giving two points for students that have a B grade in their A and P. Um, if you get those two points there, you're losing points from the GPA points at the top about your prerequisite GPA. Um, but if you get a 4.0, you're getting more points out of those um, 40 points for your 45 prereqs, whereas um, getting those two points for the B is, you know, not, it's not as much. Um, it is impossible to get the 70 points. You want to get as close to 70 as possible. Um, and uh, just try, try to get points from as many places as you can. So, and I... I know that the requirements say you only have to have 30 of your 45 prereqs done at the time of application. Even though that's what it says, kind of like what Hal was saying, you get zero points for completion of your A and P, you get zero points for um, the 36 out of 45 credits complete. You know, your A and P sequence will only be um, kind of one deep, so you wouldn't get any points there. So right there, that's 10 points missing. Um, and again, check in. If you don't get in your first year, call me. We are very transparent. We will tell you every single spot where you lost points. Even if it's not what you want to hear, we're going to tell you where you need mm -hmm. to fix your application. Because at the end of the day, all we want you to do is get in. And based on our statistics from the last few years, all we can tell you are trends. Um, as all of you guys know, the application pool changes drastically each year. So what was competitive one year might not be competitive the next. And know how you have to apply, like PCC, what is, once you get in to the interview process, what does that look like? Look at your interview questions, then if you're applying to OHSC, look at how they do it. Because when I started, it was merely a proctored essay, which he proctored for me. But the year after I started, they now do a proctored essay and an interview. And, like, you have to be able to interview well. And I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure PCC offers people that will help you inter learn to interview. And now they're, OHSC is teaching us how to interview for jobs and how to look at like which professional practice models hospitals use and stuff, which you'll get into. But look at how the interview process goes. Know your answers to questions before you go in. Practice them on paper because when you get in there, you're going to be timed and it's, you've got to make it sound right and eloquent. 
And can you guys speak to the time writing um, that you did the proctor essay for PCC? I can, but I don't remember how long it was. I'm you guys do. Yeah. I'm like, I don't remember. 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 <laughs> did you block it out? I did. <laughs> I've written so many papers by now. I just, uh, a lot of things get locked out. I do know you That's walk true. in and it's very um, sterile, kind of, very tense feeling. It's just rows of computers and desks just like this. This is OHSU. No, this was PCC over at Sylvania. Yeah, I felt different. And so it was just very, sit here, here's your questions, everyone look forward. Like, it was, it was a little weird, but I knew that question, I knew the answers to my questions because I looked up multiple questions that they could ask me that are just very generic questions that every school could ask you. And I had an answer lined up for them so that I could write to that end because I had the experience, I could relay it to an actual experience. So I think that helps when you have experience. You can say, I did this, and this is my experience of when I did this and applied this. Because then they're like, oh my God, she already, he or she already has been working in the field. They already know what this means. And bring your passion. You know, if this mm -hmm. is what you want, convey it when you're writing. It exactly. goes a long way. My biggest point is, they're telling you guys, like, oh, get these points for community service. It's not like they're just not throwing all of these, you know, go and do all these things. They're actually, like, if they're telling you go get community service, it's not just to write it down. You're going to learn so much if you do community service. And if you get a question that involves community service, with, which I did at OHSU for one of my essays, um, you're going to have an experience. If they want you to be a CNA because you're going to get, you're going to walk into the room and you're going to be, interviewed and you're going to have so many things you can draw from and if you don't have CNA experience and you didn't have community experience and you don't have like all of these crazy situations that happen like mm -hmm. you know I see crazy things all the time being a CNA and I can sit in a room with someone and talk for hours about it but if you don't have that experience like they're preparing you for these essays they're preparing you for you know, all of it and just don't worry about getting the points. I mean, get the points, but see the bigger picture. Like, you, they want you to learn and have all these experiences to draw from. Um, yeah, I think that the essay was the easiest part. Um, it was just like a computer lab. We've all been in a computer lab. Um, I saw a lot of familiar faces. It's weird because, like, once you get to this point, you can kind of see, like, a trend of, like, the same type of personalities going into healthcare fields. So I kind of just, like, talked to people, got my nerves out. Um, and then, like, if you have experience, it's going to just come for you. You're just going to be able to write freely. Um, interviewing is hard for me. <laughs> that was very <laughs> nerve-wracking. Um, yeah, so just Google questions, yeah. like she was saying. Just, oh, it's just you interview know. questions, PCC interview questions, nursing interview questions. And like Lisa said, bring your passion, because this is really your only opportunity oh, yeah. to represent yourself outside of your academics. I mean. Mm -hmm. You guys can all have 4.0s, but they want to see who wants it. Exactly. Who wants to be they want here. to see your personality and like your experiences that you've already had that make you want to go into the field. Cool. Not just because I want to care for people. I want to care for people. Like, why? Yeah. And what have you done that made you decide that? Or what have you seen in your life? Or what have you experienced with underserved populations? Are you passionate about? low-income people getting equal health care, like stuff like that, like know what you're passionate about. So when you sit down to write, it portrays in your writing. When you guys wrote, when you practiced those essays, who did you get to review them? Did you just give them to each other? I did not write anything down. I, I more of talked about myself and my experience to others. Just talked about it. What was one of the questions that you remember that you were able to write about yourself? Oh, um, what, what would make me a great nurse, I think? It's, I don't remember. <laughs> I, <didn't really laughs> I, just, I just remember bringing my passion, like this is where I need to be, um, and this, these are the skills I have. And, just know why you want to be a nurse. Yeah. Why teamwork is important to you. Yeah. How you're a good team player. Mm -hmm. What's important in people. It, if you're on a team, what 
do you look for in a valuable teammate? Because mm -hmm. that's exactly what it is. And then there's some field as teamwork. I yeah. think one of mine was, um, have you worked with underserved populations? Or how do you relate to them or something? Mm -hmm. And I'm a white girl, but guess what? I've had experiences, so I got to write those down. And, all, and I know at PCC, all of the um, essays are read anonymously, so the essay readers don't have access to your initial score. They don't have access to any of your transcripts. They're literally just reading your essay, and that's it. I'm not offering this service, but I will tell you that in the past years, I've had a couple of students that wrote a practice essay and gave it to me. And I have to tell you, I've probably made a hundred corrections on it. Um, I think you got to be sure your syntax is right, and be sure your tenses are right, be sure your spelling is right. I mean, you look really dumb when you write down T-H-E-I-R instead of T-H-E-R-E, and things like that. I mean, you, you, that's why you want to practice it, I think, is to make sure you don't have any dumb spelling errors or errors, and especially um, if English is your second language, it's just that much harder for you, um, please um, find out a bunch of, of topics that they're, one, they're going to probably pick one of those to use, write out your essay, have it reviewed by someone, and, uh, and maybe two or three people. I think some people, I heard pass them out to five different people and had five people correct them and grade them, give them back, and then they went in and wrote the thing down again. And the Sylvania Writing Center actually offers a time writing workshop once a term. Um, it's called Just in Time. It's actually taught by mm -hmm. one of our advisors. Um, and it just helps you organize your thoughts, know what it is, that, um, how, how to organize your thoughts so that you have enough time to um, get your ideas out, proofread it, um, and just, you know, not waste any time because I don't know about many of you, but I wrote, I wrote a lot of papers. Not many of them do I have a time limit to complete. Um, and sometimes that can cause a lot of stress for folks when they get into a room and you kind of look around and everybody is in the same place that you are, which is you guys have worked your butts off and you're all there and you all want in this program and you have to get it right. And so that can be really stressful and that can make people forget um, you know, examples. And so if you go to these time writing workshops, um, it really helps you organize those thoughts and communicate in the clearest and most concise way. How about spell checker? Yep, they get spell checker. You get to use spell checker mm -hmm. on the computer. And please do use it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And I did that workshop. It worked well. For it just tells you how to break down your time within the allotted time that they're going to give you, and where to focus it. So, big thing too, stick to the questions. Um, I'm like a really talkative person, and even working as a CNA, I'll come to the nurse with like important information, and I just like oh, well, I think they have this, and, and they're like, Erica, did you take the vital signs? And like, that's really got me to the point of things. Like, when you talk to someone in the healthcare field, like, be direct in this essay. Don't just, like, fluff it out, and because you're going to run out of time, you're going to bore the reader. Like, they're reading all these essays. Like, remember the question, answer exactly what they're asking.